Hello and welcome to Lesson 6 of Engineering Design Graphics, brought to you by the Keenan Fund, in part. Today we're going to be looking at the exploded isometric, and let's start as we always do by sharpening our layout pencil to a nice fine point, and our profile and shade and shadow pencil to that tapered shape that gives us a nice, there we go, a nice flat end for the tone work, tonal work and a nice sharp point for our profile line. Scrub it out and we're ready to begin. We're going to start today where we left off last week by looking at that same piece of 80-20. So let's take a quick look at that and then we will disassemble the object that we drew from. And remember that in an exploded isometric, we don't just want to show the parts individually. We want to show the way that they come together into the assembly. So here's the bracket, here are the various pieces of 8020. When we draw them, we're going to want to draw them so that everything fits on the page, and yet with space enough between them to show lines of connection and alignment. So let me reassemble this. We'll take a look at it and begin our drawing. This is a good drawing to follow along on. Uh, with all of these drawings, if you draw with the video, you'll improve more quickly and probably have more fun while doing it. So you'll remember this from last time. We're going to lay out that isometric space into which we're going to draw the three-dimensional drawing. Remember 60 degrees for all of our axes. Uh, we end up with a grid that um, allows us to quickly mark out the rough geometries of the object we are drawing. With the exploded isometric, we want to make sure that we draw just the geometries first. Uh, often we need to adjust the placement of the individual parts, their location on the page, uh, to create the best composition uh, for the drawing. And that means if we spend a lot of time finding little outlines and uh, drawing details, we may end up having to erase that work uh, as we move through the drawing. So the first thing to do is to really build the three-dimensional space um, on the page and lay out the geometry of the various parts and pieces within that space. Here I have the bracket floating up above the, uh, the first piece of 8020 um, and that here it is here and um, in that bracket then there will be or in relation to that bracket there will be the uh, screws and nuts that hold it to the piece of 8020. So I'm going to locate those things, make sure I get the, the hole in the right place uh, and at the right scale. So now I will move out along the x-axis and draw the screw that fits in the hole in the bracket. The screw should align on the center line and so I'll draw a cylinder uh, that's centered on that center line that, that's shared with the hole because that's the significant or critical alignment of this particular uh, subassembly or part. I could also move these further out along the x-axis uh, so that they have their own space but my concern in laying this out here is that I would then run into the third piece of 8020 which we will get to eventually. So remember that this is a art more than a science. Uh, we need to find a way of laying everything out in the page first of all so that it is clear. Alright, so now I go back to my center line and bring it through the bracket because on the other side of the bracket of course is that oblong nut. And so I'm going to draw the rectangle within which each of those oblong nuts fits and then pick out the uh, outline of the nut and the hole which should line right up on that center line. Let's clean it up a little bit. And now that I have those parts located, I'm going to move out into the space to the right of the first piece of 8020 and locate the second piece of 8020. This is going to be a tight fit here because I'm right at the edge of my page and uh, if I drew this a second time I would probably leave a little more space between each part. Uh, make sure I get the proportions correct before I move on. And look, there's just enough room it looks like to fit it in here. So I'm going to draw just the guiding geometries of the part, lay out the place where the detail will go, 
um, and make sure that the various parts and pieces line up. In this case, the nuts slide down into that slot on the piece of 8020. So I'm going to do a little bit of detail work to make sure that that alignment is maintained. And so here I have an alignment that is actually doubled. The center line of the hole in the bracket aligns with the nut. The nut also aligns with the slot in the piece of vertical 8020 and shows that there is an insertion along that axis as well. Uh, it's nice whenever possible to keep things in relation to the order of assembly. Now I'm going to take a minute to go back and insist on some of my uh, center lines and profiles and start to um, find the shape within uh, that I'm describing with this drawing. Remember to keep your extension lines and center lines parallel with each other along the X, Y, and Z axes of your drawing and to use a short dash for the extension of general uh, pieces that you were looking at and a center line dash, that's a long short long, for extensions along center lines. Now I'm going to work down into some of the detail work in that first piece of 8020 uh, now that I know that the location is going to work out. Uh, that'll also allow me to make sure that the alignments, spacings, and, and other shapes are in sync with what I've already drawn. Um, note that I'm switching uh, to my darker profile line pencil for some of this work and then back to the lighter layout pencil for some of the detail drawing. Um, it's good to maintain both pencils uh, ready to hand and sharp, stopping to sharpen if you need to, uh, at all times in your drawing. Uh, note I also used the stick eraser there to pull out some of the mistakes uh, next to the right next to lines that I wanted to keep. So let's go back in and um, add the extension lines for the vertical displacement of the angle above the first piece of 8020, or rather the angle bracket, I should say. And as I check on the angle bracket, let's um, make sure we locate the other two holes in the bracket. Uh, in this case, I may choose to leave out the screws that go through those holes because drawing them in to the space I've already created would really create a confusing drawing. So I'm going to find some profile lines, clean up with my stick eraser there, uh, what, I'm, what I've already created. Um, if I've made lines that are actually hidden by this smaller bracket, I'm going to erase them, draw the smaller bracket in place, And now let's move out and draw that last piece of 8020 off to the left where I still have some faint construction lines uh, from early on in my drawing. I'm going to draw that triple square that uh, defines the geometry of this piece and quickly fill in those other construction lines um, and locate it in relation to its point of origin. Please note that when you're drawing extension lines, they should run from the visible object on the page to the point where that object begins its motion uh, out in the exploded direction. We want to show the entire displacement of the object, even if that means drawing extension lines across a drawing uh, that we already have created. Now I'm going to move back to my profile line pencil and really start to pick out the profile lines to make these parts pop in three-dimensional space. It may seem like a small step, but it adds a lot in terms of clarity to the drawing. Don't bear down too hard on your pencil or it has a chance of snapping on you and then you'll have to stop, resharpen your pencil, scrub it out, and go back to work with your profile lines. I'm just about done here. I've created a exploded isometric drawing in the space of the page and hopefully you have too drawing at home. Thanks for watching and we will see you next week.
This clip is protected under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 US license. That means feel free to share it all you want, but please don't sell it or change it.